Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. In the last episode, we were going around this apartment building world, which is our apartment building, except kind of on the corrupted Silent Hill side of it. We went into room 301, which had a couple keys to some other places in the apartment. We have one key to, I think, a mailbox right up here, and then we also have the superintendent's key. So, I guess I gotta use it specifically, probably. Locker key, 106. I love you, Rachel. Mike. It's filled with love letters from Mike to Rachel. Oh, no, I mean, it's filled, Phil. It's like bursting. Look at that. It's all over the ground. Yeah, Mike must be the person that was up there in 301, because they also talked about Rachel up there. They were the person with the rare porno mags all over their apartment or something like that. They were a collector, I guess, and sounds like they were a creep. Don't know who Rachel is, though. Okay. Um, well, let's go to the superintendent's place. What? Hmm. That's a very closed-in view. Let's not go there yet. Remember, we're looking for the umbilical core that's starting to smell. <laughs> it's a red box. Man, this thing really stinks. It's practically bringing tears to my eyes. Well, I think we found it. That's so fucking disgusting. I mean, yeah, I guess I can't do anything with it. Like, what the hell would I do with it? Use a doll on it? Maybe the umbilical cord is a ghost? No. Ah, another one with nothing written on it. So I gotta go put this one under my door just like the last one. Oh, there's a couple of them. Yeah, can I put them all down there? At the same time? Hopefully. Hastily scribbled memo. Found by Nurse Rachel. So that's who Rachel is, a nurse. Return it to room 302 together with the part her boyfriend, Mike, tore off. Found by Nurse Rachel. So it sounds like this is... Basically like a lost and found, Rachel reported it, or gave it to the superintendent. And they said return it to room 302 together with the part her boyfriend, Mike, tore off. Yeah, pretty sure Mike's a stalker. Don't think they're Rachel's boyfriend, but I guess... I guess Mike's behavior maybe made some people think that they're together. The part that Mike tore off. Part that they tore off of what? I don't see anything here that I can grab. Keys for each apartment here. Take the apartment keys. Heck yeah. Keys to each apartment in the building. Actually, it looks like 303 is missing. That's Eileen's place, right? Yeah, that's Eileen's place. Um... Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Return it to room 302. Return to 302. Together with the part her boyfriend tore off. 302 is my room. Am I the creep? I mean, they said Mike. That's not my name, though, right? It's something, uh, Henry Townsend? But that's my room. Hmm. 
that's worrisome. I don't really know anything about my character. <laughs> the kitchen's just a jail with a big hole in it for passing food back and forth, I guess. All right, what's down here? It's a diary. The red box seems even stranger today. It's giving off a terrible smell. It's disgusting, but I just can't throw it away. It must have been around 30 years ago. That young couple was living in the apartment, but one day they just suddenly disappeared. Ran off just like thieves in the night. I don't know why. It must have been money troubles, or maybe they got themselves into some kind of danger. The problem came after that. They left their newborn baby when they took off. I even found the umbilical cord. I called the ambulance right away, and I heard the baby survived, but I don't know what happened to him. Oh, I'm getting some ideas here, although a few years later I often saw a young kid hanging around the apartment. One day he just stopped coming by. But now that I think of it, I'll bet he was that abandoned baby. It's a horrible story, abandoning a newborn baby. That'll happen in room 302, that's my room, and the umbilical cord I found there, well, I still can't get myself to throw it away. What the fuck? Superintendent's diary, and then in parentheses, umbilical cord. Okay, um, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of really good information in there. Let me read it a couple times. Well, this fits with some things, and I, I guess it maybe answers a few questions, but it actually doesn't answer as much as I thought. So obviously that baby is that Walter Sullivan, probably, or at least definitely the person that we saw in the stairwell who gave us the doll, and also is the uh, older version of that kid that we saw, I believe. So it happened 30 years ago, so the person in the stairwell, yeah, they looked they look like they could easily be about 30 years old. They weren't too young or, or particularly old. That definitely fits. This doesn't explain at all why they, this person seems to exist at two different ages simultaneously. That's strange. Also, to, I don't understand why the umbilical cord would suddenly start smelling now. Why is it rotting now? After 30 years. But uh, there's a couple other things we can glean from this as well. So they were in my apartment. So I think it's fair to say that even though the problem seems to be with the whole apartment building, it feels like the nucleus of this curse comes from my apartment. That's where that demonic child, I guess, or cursed child or something. I'm not sure how much they actually play a role in this. Like deliberately play a role in this, you know, if they're evil or just... If they're being used by something, I don't know. I don't know how culpable they are. But definitely seems to be the nucleus. That would explain why a lot of the really bad stuff has happened there, although some stuff has started to happen in other apartments, as we've seen. But yeah, the journalist was here too. Obviously I'm here. A lot of bad stuff's happened in that particular room because of that. Also, um, they're a young couple and they just suddenly abandoned their baby immediately after giving birth, just leaving the umbilical cord even. I suspect they were probably a young couple from... Mm, they, they probably escaped from the orphanage, right? I don't know. How, how old do orphanages keep 
these kids. I mean, would they keep them until they're like 18, 19? When I think of an orphanage, I think of like small kids. So I don't know if they would have escaped directly from the orphanage because they said a young couple is what the superintendent said. So, I mean, they, they wouldn't have been like 14 or something. Um, but I would bet at least one of them, maybe both of them, comes from the cult. Probably the orphanage. Probably one of the kids that had experiments done on them. Experiments that I suspect are trying to find another candidate for birthing this god. So that's probably why they abandoned the baby. They saw that it was... Maybe they saw that it was cursed or something was wrong with it. And they wanted to get the hell out of there. Maybe they just couldn't take care of it and knew that... Uh, the, like maybe the cult was after them and they were on the run. I don't know. Well, now we got the keys to everywhere except Eileen's room. Look at this wallpaper. Groovy. My darling's number. Some numbers that look like a phone number. Will you press these numbers? Sure. There's a phone ringing somewhere. Portable medical kit? That's the first one of that I found. Heals your body by repairing wounds. Looks like a nurse's outfit. Yeah, a nurse's uniform. Rachel. Wait. This is the creep's place. Okay, so my apartment is not the creep's place. They said return it, the package, to 302, my apartment, along with the part that Mike, the creep, tore off. Uh, I'm not sure what Mike tore off, but it, it sounds like it originally came from me, but I am not the creep. I'm not the one who tore off a thing from my own thing. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely the creep's place. Oh, fuck! Ah. Jesus Christ! Wait, what? How are you chewing? How? How? How is it chewing on me? I have the fucking anti-ghost thing on. What the fuck is wrong with this place? I see why they gave me a medical kit now. That is so gross. Jesus. Where is this phone? It sounds like it's coming from this room.
I don't understand. I mean, surely I wouldn't be hearing it this loud if it wasn't, like, right next to me. But maybe it's in another apartment? I can't open any of these doors? It's not in this room? I don't know. I'm getting the hell out of here. Give me this back, asshole. It really is just that loud. It is coming from another apartment. Well, I was hearing it pretty loudly from... I think it was about here, so it's probably this one at the end of the hall. Oh god, so the creep lived next to Rachel? Because I think that was Rachel's number. Uh-oh. Something behind me. Uh-oh. Uh. -oh. uh. Alright, I'm leaving this thing on. Is this the same one? Is it following me? Through doors? Come on, come on. Can I not use it? Why can't I use it? Oh, I had to get out of the attack menu. Okay. Ooh. I think my medallion's like mostly used up. It looks kind of dull and broken and not too good. There's a lot of blood in here. It's a turntable. Lots of records and music magazines on the shelves. Yeah, they seem like... Looks like they're really into music. Tons of music equipment and records. They got some speakers, like... Disassembled speakers on the table there. Even more records. It's so hard to try to act normally and not be just constantly thinking about those weird gurgling noises as if it's a monster coming to me. Just gotta remember it's not moving. Boy, the fuck is this telephone? It, uh, how? Does it just ring forever? Maybe this is the person's apartment. Maybe it's on the floor up above. Fuck. I... yeah. Okay. That exact same ghost isn't gonna just follow me everywhere. If it does, then I'll just leave it pinned down. Alright, that one I can't unlock. I mean... Given how far I can hear it from, it could be, like, literally anywhere. That's the worst decision I ever made to ring that damn phone. I'm gonna be hearing it for years until I find it.
Some sturdy little fly bat things. What are those growths in the wall? What the hell are those? Why does the wall seem permeable and flesh-like? Okay, we're getting out of there. Uh, I really wanted to save this med kit. I mean, I still could. I don't like using up all my health items as soon as I get them. Um, I just need to get back to my apartment. What are the chances I won't encounter an enemy in here? Slim? I could take one more hit, maybe. I'll explore this place and then go back to my apartment. I'll be fine. Yeah. The cordless fluorescent is giving off an eerie glow. This place is missing interior walls. I already went in there. Yeah, that's it for this place. Okay, I am going to head to the third floor real quick to put the notes under my door, and then I'm going to go through the hole into my room, read the notes, and heal. I got hit twice by the dogs, and I went down to literally no visible health. That bar was completely unfilled. I gotta say, it's a brilliant idea what they did with the phone. It's so annoying and disturbing and unnerving. It sounds the same everywhere, no matter whether you're on the first floor, or the second floor, or the third floor, it sounds the same. You can't... It. It's just like it's being broadcast over the entire apartment, apartment building. You can't fucking locate it, you just gotta go room to room to room. You might be hearing that damn noise for an hour. I picked up the key that Eileen from room 303 must have dropped. I thought I'd return it, but she wasn't home. I guess I'll give it to the super. This sounds like Eileen was the person that they were obsessed with. But Eileen? Rachel? Whoops. Here it is. I lost the key to Eileen Galvin's room. I've got to find it and bring it back. Let me think. The last place I saw it was... It's ripped here and I can't read the rest. We found this in the creep's room, right? We found both in the creep's room? I mean, it just says in the other thing, picked up the key that Eileen from room 303 must have dropped, and then the other one is... The scrap is the... I lost it, gotta find it and bring it back? So they just found it, I guess? Maybe they didn't steal it? They're just trying to return it. But isn't this the creep? Why would the creep just return it? Seems uncreepish. And if Eileen is Rachel, they are the same person. I feel like I'm the creep again because, I mean, fuck, I'm staring at them through this hole all the time. That's creepy. I mean, I know it's a whole minute of desperation trying to escape and contact somebody, but it still feels voyeuristic. Looks like Eileen is okay. For now. Yeah, they're still all dressed up. Like before, they were all dressed up and it looked like they were about to go somewhere, but they never did. Which is... Which is bad, actually. It would have been good if they did leave the apartment. I think. 
Remember the 30-year-old Walter Sullivan, I think, knocked on the door? When we first came to this world, we saw them knocking on Eileen's door, and then we saw Eileen, like, look at the door, like, hey, my date's here, or something. But they never opened the door. The guy just walked away. She never opened the door. Why? Yeah, I feel like she was waiting for a date to come or something. Police arrested a Mr. Saguru Murakashi after he was discovered naked, urinating from the top of a utility pole in North Ashfield. Okay. Are they smiling? The fuck is wrong with them? What do they want? Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, hopefully I'm gonna find that damn phone.